In today's clip, Katie uses the word fricking. When I first heard it, I thought, oh great, it's one of my favourite words, frigging. And then I thought, no, it never is. If it's an American speaking, they've changed it to fricking or freaking. But it is actually an old English word, frigging, that means to wriggle. Um, which is interesting, because that's what Katie is doing here. She is wriggling out of answering the question, not once, but three times. OK, let's have a listen to the clip. So what is your theory, each one of you separately, on what happened to Sebastian? What I mean, just like, I know you've probably had two or three, but like, what do you think now? We're three weeks later. What is your thoughts now? Like, what do you think? I wish I had a freaking clue on where my son was, to be honest with you. None of it makes sense. But not so much where he was, but like, if you just play it back in your head, like, if you think, what in the world happened? I mean, what could have happened? Is there things like, maybe that you've thought over and over as a mother what could have happened something ring a bell from a week ago a month ago something that's clicked to you i mean anything I, I mean all i can say is everything that i've come up with um i've i've asked law enforcement to look into and so far nothing has led to anything substantial in finding him i mean we've we've gone over wild probabilities you know we don't get a life like stuff. Bergen Bell. and um yeah, I'm looking at that right now. They never said nothing about it on the radio. We... 10 I... haven't been able to figure out anything that explains where my son is. Yeah. Why do people use swear words, or as you say in America, curse words? Why do people do that? It's for several reasons. Could be to relieve yourself of some frustration or some anger. Or it could be, in a different context, uh, to express surprise. Or even joy. What do you think's going on here? I wish I had a freaking clue. Is that frustration, anger, joy or surprise? I think it must be frustration, isn't it? She's saying, I'm so frustrated, I wish I had a clue on where my son was. Hmm. It, um, it's funny because she's not actually answering the question. The question is what happened. Have you noticed that? The question is what happened. And um, she's expressing frustration over where her son is. Don't get confused with the was there. That's just a, a grammar rule. When we say, I wish, we have to send everything back into the past. So that she's answering the question there, where is my son? I wish I had a freaking clue where my son was. So she's expressing frustration over something that she hasn't been asked. It's interesting, actually, because just uh, last week, when I, I think I'd done one video and I thought, OK, I'll do another one now on something else. And... Um, Sebastian Rogers' case hadn't captivated me at that point and I thought, what can I do? And I looked at uh, the interview with Stuart Hazel, horrible man who killed his granddaughter. Actually, it was his, I beg your pardon, it was his girlfriend's granddaughter. He wasn't anything connected. He wasn't by marriage or blood or anything, but he was living with the grandmother and he ended up killing the granddaughter. And he, in that interview, he describes everything that he did the day that she went missing everything he described how he hoovered the carpet emptied the dog's bed did the washing up 
collected the washing, the laundry from upstairs, drew the curtains, made the beds. He tells you everything that he did in fine detail that day. And there's only one thing he can't tell you, and that is, what did his granddaughter say to him before she left the house? And when he comes to say that he doesn't know, he says, I can't bloody remember what she said. He puts in that curse word, bloody. It's funny because that would have been the only bit of information that would have been of any use to us really. All of his hoovering and washing up was just filler. It would have been useful if he could have remembered what she said, i.e. where she was going. But he couldn't bloody remember. Would you believe it? That's the one thing I couldn't bloody remember. I get the same sense here with Katie, with her fricking. I, I, I wish I had a fricking clue. I mean, she'll tell you anything you like without a swear word, but when it comes to the thing that we need, you know, what happened, suddenly her frustration is triggered. Um, now, if you parked your car, came back an hour later and it was gone, and somebody said to you, what do you think happened? You'd probably say, well, somebody stole it. Or I think maybe, oh, I know, perhaps I parked in a restricted area and it got towed away. Or maybe even some space aliens came down and they needed a, a Ford for their collection and they uh, dematerialized it and rematerialized it over in Alpha Centauri somewhere. That might have happened. But you'd come up with something. You would the human mind is inquiring we would try to work out what happened that's just the way we are so if you parked your car and you came back and it wasn't there and somebody said what do you think happened would you say I don't know where my car is is that the right answer what happened to your car I don't know where my car is it's not the right answer is it but Katie gives us this three times in this answer. Possibly I'd even argue four times. We'll have a look. But um, she avoids this question again and again and again. And I think that she is getting a little bit frustrated with the question. Here we're getting this rare occurrence of curse words in her language. I think it's reflecting the fact that she doesn't like the question anymore. Um, now... She avoids the question. She gives us the answer to, where is your son? And she says, I wish I had a freaking clue where he was. She answers that question, where is your son? She doesn't answer the question that's asked of her, what happened? And um, to cover this up, she says, to be honest with you. You see how she goes into that? I think that serves a dual purpose, actually. Firstly, it um, um, tries to reassure us of her veracity, her truthfulness, um, which obviously is in doubt if she's not answering the question. She feels the need to boost up her response with an honesty statement. Um, but it also gives her a second to think of her next line. And her next line is, none of it makes sense. My question would be, what is it? None of what makes sense. Notice that she hasn't told us anything. There's not a sum of it there. There's not an any of it there. There's nothing there. How can none of it make sense when she hasn't told us what it means? Well, she must be referring to her previous um, guess at what happened. Perhaps that's what it is. Maybe none of that makes sense. Let's remember what she said. She said that uh, it was a happy day. They went out and had a great day. Came back home. The last thing that Sebastian did before going to bed was he uh, moved the dust cart to, or the trash can, sorry, to the um, driveway. And that's pretty much it. He went to bed and she heard a noise and said, what are you doing in there? And, or, or I don't know what you're doing in there, but please go to sleep. And that was it. She didn't hear any more from him. 
it was all hunky-dory until the next morning and she went in there and he was gone oh sorry I missed a bit of the story out didn't I she said as as he was going to bed he said um, yeah good night puppies good night mummy I love you all or some worse to that effect and uh, yeah all sweetness and light he was happy as Larry went to bed and uh, that was it the next morning he wasn't there um, she proposed in a very deceptive sort of way that he had left the house through the front door failing to put his shoes on or any outdoor clothes and um, just vanished so is that what she's talking about when she says none of it makes sense if it is then I agree with her because none of that does make sense right she's not telling a lie here none of it makes sense None of that does make sense. But that is her own story. She's giving you a story and she's saying, look at that, that doesn't make sense. As if to sort of say, well, I'm with you guys. I don't understand it either. Look at look at this funny story. It doesn't make sense, does it? I'm, I, I'm with you there, she's saying. I don't get it either. But she has concocted it. So I don't think that she's in any mood to come out with that old chestnut again and she tries to fob us off with the answer to a different question where is he and to her credit the interviewer pursues her on this she doesn't let her off the hook and she asks her again let's have a look so she asks again she says but not so much where he was she's saying no don't give me that answer to where do you think he is I don't want that that's not why I ask you and I wish that she had then just given a simple direct question to Katie you know what happened I'm asking you what happened that night but she doesn't she goes into this very long compound question I think she's probably getting a little bit exasperated uh, because it is a very clear question and she knows that uh, Katie has given her the slip so she's getting a bit exasperated and she asks it like this I'm not asking you where he was, but like you, um, badly written, but like you just play it back in your head, you think, what in the world happened? We know what she's asking, don't we? You play it back in your head, you think of that day, you think, hang on a minute, we were eating popcorn, we were having a good time, was it something, what happened? What was the mood, you know, how did the mood shift throughout the day? What, what was he thinking? Um, I know my son, I've known him 15 years, so what was he thinking? I know his behaviour. What was he thinking that caused that behaviour? You know, she'd have been, run as this lady's asking, running it back in your head. What happened that day that caused that behaviour? Um, she asks again, what could have happened? Is there things like maybe that you've thought over and over as a mother? There you are. She's appealing to her mother's sixth sense, I think, there. You know, that mothers know. Mothers have a sense of, um, you know, what their child is going through or what their child is thinking. They have a sense for their child's emotions. Um, she's asking, as a mother, what could have happened? What, what do you think happened? Did something ring a, ring a bell from a week ago? Ah, maybe something triggered it way back, or a month ago, she's asking. Was there something that triggered it way back then? As a mother, you'd have been running all that through your head, wondering what on earth triggered this. Because he went to bed sweetness and light. Good night, mummy. Good night, puppies. Love you all. And then he was just gone. So what happened? She's asking, what happened? What do you think, as a mother, as a, somebody with intuition? What do you think happened? So the question couldn't be clearer. She's asked her in half a dozen different ways. Let's look at the answer. Um, so she needs a little bit of thinking time. And ding a ling, the bells ring. All I can say. All I can say. Oh, I see. What is this? All I have permission to say? Or all I'm able to say? It's one of the two, isn't it? But we know that she's going to attempt to restrict her answer, um, censor herself in some way. All I can say is 
everything that I've come up with. How about that for a choice? Everything that I've come up with. What does that mean, to come up with something? It means to invent. Everything that I've invented. Um, a bit more thinking time. I've asked law enforcement to look into. Oh, really? So you've come up with something, you've invented a funny story and then you've gone to them and you, you've been proactive. This is what she's telling us here. Notice the verb choice here, asked. I have asked them to look into it. I've gone to them and said, look, here it is, look into this please. Um, I don't think that's how it works. I think that they ask you, don't they? And then they listen to what you think happened and they take it from there. You don't go to them. Anyway, uh, and so far, nothing has led. All right, so far. So she's put. She's moving that circumstance there because she's saying, look, my funny story's still got legs. So far, it hasn't led anywhere, but I'm not ruling it out. My funny story's still got legs. So far, nothing has led to anything substantial in finding him. Um, notice again, she's onto this again, finding him. That's not the question. The question is what happened and she's gone back to this again. Where is he? She then throws in this word, probabilities. Wild probabilities. There's another word that's similar to that and the similar word is possibilities. If you were answering the question, what do you think happened, there would be possibilities. But she doesn't give us those. She gives us wild probabilities. And that word usually comes up in the context of the probability of finding someone after so many hours. After the first 24 hours, the probability is much reduced. There's the word wild there, wild probabilities. So maybe one in a million, right? One in one million. That's a wild probability, isn't it? Um, but it's not talking about the possibilities of what happened. It's talking about the probabilities of finding him. That's what she's talking about. That's what they've gone over. And I think she knows she's hoodwinked us there. So she throws in one of these you knows. Probabilities, you know. She's hoping that you... Um, haven't cottoned on to the difference between possibilities and probabilities. You know? Probabilities, you know? And that gives her a little bit of time. It's a sort of, um, the word be approval, seeking approval, you know? See, just checking you still that the, the listener's still on board. Are you still buying all of this, she's saying? And it gives her a little bit, minute to think of her next line as well, which is peculiar. And we haven't been able to figure out, oh yeah, not, uh, uh, not we, but we I haven't been able to figure out. That's interesting, isn't it? We I haven't been able to figure anything that explains where my son is. She's um, covering both the police and herself here, but I think um, she doesn't like to speak for them, so she switches to I. Possibly wants to give the impression that maybe they have figured something out. But she personally hasn't been able to figure out anything. I haven't been able to figure out anything that explains, that's an interesting word choice, where my son is. Back to that again. Where is he? So at least three times, I would argue this thing about probabilities is probably the hidden fourth time. She has avoided answering that question. What happened? What do you think happened that night? Why did he get up and walk out? She's avoided that at least three times, possibly four. And um, yes, interesting word choice here, explains. I think she's chosen that word and she's tried to slot that into that sentence, but it doesn't fit. You can't explain where someone is if you don't know where they are. It's the wrong verb. It's the wrong verb. You can't explain where they are if you don't know where they are. You might be able to explain why you don't know where they are, 
but you can't explain where they are if you don't know where they are, if that makes sense. But I think she needs that word for a true answer. I can't explain this, is what she's trying to say, maybe. I can't explain it to you. I know what happened. I know what happened, but I can't explain it to you, because if I do explain it to you, then I'm implicated. You see? And if I'm implicated, well, everybody will think I'm a bad mother. I think that's what it comes down to here. Self-preservation. She's preserving her own reputation. I personally, I think those tears on day one were real. Those tears were real. My thinking on this, if you've been watching my videos up to now, and I know that I haven't covered everything, some of you, thanks for commenting, but uh, I haven't kept up with all the theories that are out there on the internet by any means. All I'm doing is looking at the text that I show you. And from those, I don't get a feeling that she's a malicious person. I don't think she's done anything intentionally malicious to hurt him. I think that she has possibly taken guidance from Christopher Proudfoot in terms of disciplining Sebastian. Probably threw away his stuff. He went out to retrieve it, got locked out couldn't get back in or didn't want to knock on the door and reveal the fact that he climbed out the window because then he'd be in trouble decided to get to his dad's house and met with some misadventure on the way that's what I think but if she explains that she needs to explain about throwing his things in the bin and disciplining him and that will cause people to think of her perhaps as a bad mother so she doesn't want that above all she doesn't want to be thought of that this is about preserving her reputation I think from her point of view she thinks well look he's gone gone he's gone the results the same whether you know it, it happened because I was a bit cruel to him or because he just walked out of his own accord that doesn't really matter to the world I know what happened but what's important here is the fact that he's gone and I don't know where he is. This is why she keeps coming up with us. this. She keeps wanting us to think about where is he? She doesn't want us to think about what happened because that leads back to her, you see, in however a small way. I don't even know if she's criminally responsible. I don't know what the law is with this sort of thing, but on the face of it, it doesn't seem intentional in any way. I don't think even if she was disciplining him in a rather harsh manner, I don't think she intended for him to vanish. So there's no need for her to cover this up to this extent, unless it is to preserve her reputation. That's all I can think of really. Okay, well that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Thanks very much for watching as usual. Thanks for all your comments. I love interacting with you online. Um, it's a pity that Katie said fricking and not frigging because that would have been an excellent segue into frigging in the rigging. The Sex Pistols song um, from the Nevermind the Bollocks album. I like that name, Nevermind the Bollocks. That should be... Uh, a forensic linguist's um, motto, motto, shouldn't it? But anyway, I won't sing the song to you because I am mindful of the fact that some of you have asked me not to sing. So, <laughs> that is fair enough. I won't subject you to that this time. Alright, thanks for listening. Speak to you again soon. Bye.